And now, stay tuned for the program that has rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am The Whistler, and I know many things for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story, The Little Things. <laughs> It was night in the small northern California town. The weak old-fashioned street lamps were almost obscured by the heavy blanket of fog that rolled aimlessly in from the sea. The misty quiet of the town was disturbed only by the muffled arrival and departure of an occasional automobile. Neon signs of the local honky-tonks and bars weakly portrayed their identification and merchandise. Beneath one of these signs stood Johnny Larson. From his pocket, he drew a wrinkled piece of paper, held it nearer the dim light to study the penciled address. Then, striking a match to the dry paper, he watched it burn quickly into meaningless ashes. Yes, from now on, Johnny Larson was going to take good care of all the uh, little things and let the big things take care of themselves. He ground the ashes to a fine powder under one heel, then moved toward the street to hail a cab that he saw emerging from the fog. Hey, taxi! Where to, Chief? For a uh, 400 block on Olive Street. Okay. You almost slipped, didn't you, Johnny? Almost forgot to take care of a uh, little thing. You caught yourself just in time. Or you'd have given the driver the street number you so diligently burned. But now as you settle back into the seat of the cab, you reflect again on the five long years you've just spent behind bars and the little inconsequential things that had put you there. You promise yourself you won't forget again. In a matter of minutes, you're standing in front of a large, outdated frame house. You peer both ways into the fog and listen. No sound of footsteps. No one nearby to see you enter. You walk quickly up the wooden steps... At your knock, the door opens a scant distance, only enough to allow a thin shaft of light to pierce the darkness about you. Yeah, who is it? Larson. Okay. Eddie's upstairs. <laughs> well, look who's here, man of the hour. Come in, Johnny, come in. Hi, Eddie. Uh, how do you feel after your vacation, Johnny? Lonely. Ah, uh, <laughs> same old Johnny. Everything for laughs, huh? Oh, come here, I want you to meet the boys. And the girl. Bernie, Hal, meet Johnny Larson. Best in the business. Hi, Johnny. Hi. Laura, it's Johnny. Hello, Johnny. She in this, Eddie? Up to a pretty neck. And count me out. Hey, now, wait a minute, Johnny. I know you did five years because of a double-crossing day. Sorry, Eddie. Maybe some other time. There'll be no other time, Johnny. This is it. Okay. Looks like I'll live longer if I go along, huh? Okay, Eddie, it's a deal. Oh, good. Hey, Laura, fix us a drink, will you? Okay. Yeah, uh, Bernie, Al, I uh, want to talk to Johnny here alone. Sure, Eddie. We'll be right downstairs if you need us, boss. Ah, they're good boys. Always do exactly what I tell them. Yeah, I'm sure they do. How do you want your drink, Johnny? Straight? A little water. I uh, want you and Laura to get along, Johnny. I want everything to run smoothly. We're in this thing together and we'll get out together. Fair enough? Fair enough. Oh, I'm sure we'll get along. Won't we, Johnny? Yeah, we'll get along. Now, look, Johnny, here's a setup. 
Any day now, the local bank will have over $200,000 in its vault. The cannery payroll. Wondered why you picked this, Berg. Uh, it'd be a cinch for you, Johnny. You never worked a sweeter setup. The bank's nothing but a tin can. This tin can ever been knocked over before? Yeah, that's the funny part. This payroll business has been going on for years, never a hitch. And I tell you, this vault's as simple as a piggy bank. 1910 equipment all the way through. Good. When do I case it? Uh, you won't. I w Not in person, anyway. That's Laura's job. She'll have so many pictures of the inside of that bank, we'll be able to build one of our own, just like it. And the pictures will be all yours, Johnny. With them, you can become familiar with the whole layout. No, those alarm systems are not as easy as you think. Some of the simplest looking and the most dangerous. Yeah, uh, not this one. Like I told you, it's turn-of-the-century stuff. Any smart high school kid could take it apart. Yeah, sounds okay. Now, uh, how about the split? That's my lookout. You'll get your share. I yeah, just thought I'd ask. Sure, Johnny. Sure. And now I think we'd better turn in. This uh, this thing could break any time. You look like you could use some sleep. Oh, I could. Had a long trip. Hey, show him to his room, Laura. Yeah. I'll see you both in the morning. Your room's down the hall to the left. You'll lead. I'll follow you. Looks pretty good to me. Uh, Johnny. Huh? Do you know Eddie very well? Why? Oh, nothing. Only, uh, wouldn't hurt to keep your eyes open. Thanks. Won't hurt you to keep your mouth shut. Okay. Forget it. I will. Good night. But you don't forget what Laura said, do you, Johnny? You wonder what she meant, and you intend to find out. You turn off the lights in your room, sit quietly on your bed, until you hear a door slam at the far end of the hall. You quietly open your door, then move quickly, noiselessly down the hall, until you hear Eddie's laughter from one of the rooms, and you inch close to the door and listen. Uh, don't worry about it, Laura. Give him time. I don't know, Eddie. I don't like it. You just be your own sweet self, baby, and you won't have any trouble. But why him? Why not somebody else? Hey, you like Johnny, huh? Fell from quick, is that it? Oh, no, that's not it. It's just that I think... What you think isn't important, Laura. Oh, forget that. I do the thinking on this job, all of it. And it'll go just the way I planned it. On a caper this big, we need a fall guy. And Johnny Larson is made to order. He's our pigeon. <laughs> With 1951 model cars beginning to make their appearance, this is the season when a lot of drivers get new car fever. But if a look at your bank book tells you that a new car isn't for you, then why not enjoy the next best thing? And what is the next best thing to a new car? Why, it's your car powered with Signal Ethel. You see, this premium grade of Signal's famous go-farther gasoline is engineered to bring out the best in any car of any age. The quickest starting, the smartest pickup, the smoothest ping-free power that sends you smoothly and high up hills that make other cars clatter and shift. <laughs> and I don't get the idea, of course, that Signal Ethel's going to let you step away from all new cars. After all, smart new car drivers use Signal Ethel, too, to bring out all the exciting performance that's built into today's power-packed high-compression motors. But of this you can be sure, the next best thing to a new car is your car, powered with Signal Ethel gasoline. Well, Johnny, somewhere along the line, you must have overlooked one of the little things. But you never thought of being the fall guy, did you, Johnny? You know Eddie's right. You are tailor-made for that role. An ex-convict with your reputation could shout his head off about a double cross, and no one would listen. Finally, you go to bed and fall into a restless sleep, certain of only two things, that there will be a fall guy, but it won't be you. 
Late the next morning, a persistent pounding on the bedroom door awakes you. Okay. Okay. San Quentin must have made you cautious, Johnny. I should think you want to get away from locked doors. Habit, I guess, Eddie. What time is it? 11 o'clock. Well, what's all the noise about? We're cracking this thing tonight. Tonight? Yeah. Cannery payroll was delivered at 8 this morning. First time they ever brought it in on a Saturday. That's right. It is Saturday. How do you know it was the payroll was delivered this morning? <laughs> you underestimate me, Johnny. Okay. And what about the pictures? Now, Laura walked in that bank this morning at 10. When she walks out, she'll have more photographs than the family album. Look, this picture business, it's, it's pretty risky, isn't it? Not when it's done my way, Johnny. You see, Laura has a small camera fastened inside her purse. A tiny hole in one side of the purse holds the lens. All she has to do is hold her purse in any direction and press the back of it where the cable release is, and she's in business. Oh. She opens her purse for a Kleenex and turns the film. Simple. <laughs> she could take a picture of the bank president himself and get away with it. You've got it all figured out, haven't you, Eddie? Always, Johnny. Always. Yeah. Well, what's the getaway pitch? Well, we split up in two cars. The boys and I will take the sedan, you and Laura the coupe. We want to avoid all possible suspicion. And how about that split? We'll meet in Las Vegas tomorrow and divide the hall there. Las Vegas is a long way off. I'd prefer my cut right after the job. Sorry, Johnny. My plans are made. Besides, you'll have my deposit of good faith, will you? What do you mean? Well, Laura, of course. She's worth a million in any man's language. Well, thanks for the compliment, Eddie. But a million's a little high. Laura, baby, how'd it go? Oh, wonderful. No trouble at all. You know, I could have filmed Gone with the Wind in that sleepy little box without being noticed. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> now, the sooner you get those developed, the better. I knew you'd be impatient, Eddie. Look, I'll uh, use the big closet over there for a dark room. Should have the wet prints in about an hour. Good. I'll be downstairs. Give me a call when you have them finished. Hmm. You know, Eddie's like a kid with a new toy when he's on a job. I guess everybody gets a little nervous. Boy, when this is over, I'm going to make the most expensive dress shops in Los Angeles think they were hit by a whirlwind. Los Angeles? You bet. As soon as I get my share, I'm heading for the best shop. It might shop. take a little while to get to L.A. from Las Vegas. Oh. Well, I guess I just... I can't get Los Angeles out of my mind. Ever since I was a kid, I've wanted to put on the dog there. Sure. Sure, I, I know how it is. Yeah. Well, I guess i better get those pictures developed. Yeah, maybe you're better. We can't keep Eddie waiting. Well, Johnny, Laura's slipped on a little thing, hasn't she? You watch her as she sets up her equipment in the closet. Notice her nervousness. She knows she blundered when she said Los Angeles instead of Las Vegas. But she doesn't know how much. You know she didn't go for the double cross. But you don't know how much she goes for Eddie. She's already warned you to keep your eyes open around Eddie. You decide she's worth a try. And in about an hour, Laura comes out of the closet. Uh, got some prints for you, Johnny. Good. Still a little bit wet. No, I'll watch it. Yeah. How are they? Fine. You did a good job. Real good job. I'm glad you think so, Johnny. These shots of the alarm system are perfect. Yeah, I've handled this kind before. Simple. Uh, how about the vault? Duck soup. Eddie was right. The whole setup is ancient. Looks big and impressive, but the easiest kind in the world to crack. Mm, Eddie said you know what to do with it, all right. You got more prints? Oh, yeah, a lot more. Wonderful setup. Can't get over what an old-style vault this is. Guess I'll call Eddie and tell him they're ready. Yo, oh, wait a minute, uh, Laura. Look, uh, what's with you and Eddie? Well, what do you mean? I mean, how many double crosses would you pull for Eddie? Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Look, baby, I know all about it. It's all fixed for me to be the sacrifice. Oh, you're not feeling very well, Johnny. I better call Eddie. I wouldn't I... if I were you, Laura. It'd just end up with somebody getting hurt. There'd be no 200 grand, no Eddie, no Laura, and no Johnny. Now, what do you say we be friends? Well, you've got to believe me, Johnny. I had nothing... Sure, in... sure, I know. You don't like that double-cross idea. Eddie knows you don't. I heard you telling him. That's just one more reason we should be friends. As if Eddie found out I knew, he might get a little worried about you. You wouldn't tell him that I... I Relax, just... Laura. We're friends, remember? What do you want from me? How does Eddie figure on framing me? Well? The pictures. But these, these pictures? Yeah, the ones you're holding in your hands. Your fingerprints are all over them. He was going to leave him in the vault. Well, what do you know? That's pretty clever. 
For Eddie. After the getaway, I was to run out on you in Las Vegas. Eddie knew you'd try to find me, but he also knew the cops would be trying to find you. Now he was banking on the cops finding you first. They probably would have. Might have been fun, Laura. Well, what are you going to do? Go through with it, just as if nothing happened. Well, how do you expect to get away with I it? I don't know yet, but I'll find out. Call Eddie up here. What? You heard. Only when you give him the pictures, you give him the ones I haven't touched. Outside of that, we act as if nothing happened. Yeah, but suppose he finds out. He won't. Well, what about me? Don't you worry, baby. Johnny will take good care of you. Now go out of the door and call Eddie. Did they come out okay, Laura? Johnny thinks so, don't you, Johnny? Yeah, just what I need. Ah, uh, swell. Oh, are those some of the snaps, Laura? Yeah. Let's see him. You watch Eddie as he takes the pictures from Laura. Notice how carefully he holds them. On the edges by his forefinger and thumb, taking care that his fingerprints won't appear on them. You feel Laura's stare burning into you as Eddie speaks. He's a perfect Laura. A cinch for you, huh, Eddie? Nothing to it. Hey, you uh, think we can pull the whole job in under 20 minutes? Won't take me five minutes to crack the alarm system in the vault. All depends on how long it takes us to get inside the bank. Oh, that'll be the easiest part. There's an old ventilating setup at the rear of the bank. Al has walked past it several times. We'll be able to rip it right off the wall. It'll leave a hole large enough for you to get through. After you get inside, you can let us in through the side door. Now, by the way, how are you going to handle things while we're pulling the job? Now, we leave the coupe here at the house and pick it up in the getaway. Laurel will drive the sedan, stay outside as a lookout. That way, Al, Bernie, and I can work inside the vault. Now, we'll have four suitcases that I hope to fill. Mm-hmm. And with the three of us working inside, it shouldn't take us more than ten minutes. And what about me? Now, after you open the vault, you keep your eye on the street from inside the bank. And keep your ears open for any signal from Laura. Sounds okay. Ah, I think that covers it. I'll just take these pictures with me and let the boys get familiar with the layout. Uh, we, we still gonna split in Vegas? Yeah, why? Nothing, nothing. Just thought you might change your mind. Ah. You'll get your share in Vegas, Johnny. Well, I won't get to Las Vegas if I don't get something to eat. How about you, Johnny? No, not now. Maybe later. I'm gonna think about that alarm system a while and then... Get me a little more sleep. I got a lot of catching up to do. Yes, Johnny. And you have a lot of thinking to do, too, haven't you? You're pleased with Laura. So far, she's played her part well. But the big obstacle remains in your path. You'll have to get rid of Eddie and his henchmen after the job is over. And you don't know how to do it. After Eddie and Laura leave you alone in your room, you automatically lock the door behind them. Then you study the other set of pictures, but they offer no solution. You pace the floor, thinking, searching your mind, looking about the room as if you'd find a solution there. Finally, your eyes fall on the door. The door you always lock behind you without thinking. And it's an idea, isn't it, Johnny? Locked door. Locked doors, that's it. You hurry back to the pictures, leaf through them quickly, and then you find the one you're looking for, the picture of the vault. And you smile triumphantly as you scrutinize it carefully. Yes, Johnny, the solution to your problem had been right before your eyes all the time. Confident now, the mental strain of the past few hours gone, you suddenly feel very tired. You stretch out in your bed, sleep as if drugged. Many hours later... Laura's insistent voice wakes you. Johnny. Johnny, mm. wake up. Huh? Oh. It's 4.30 in the morning. Everything's ready. You uh, don't usually get up this early, especially on a Sunday. How could you sleep knowing what you know? Practice, baby. Practice. Johnny, I've got to know. What are you going to do? Get myself off the hook. Yeah, but what about me? Don't you worry, baby. I'll take care of you. It's a promise. Okay, Laura, that's the alley up ahead. Here we go. Everybody knows his job now. Sure, sure, sure we know. You all set, Johnny? I'm all set, Eddie. Ah. All right, park a half block down the street, Laura. Keep your eyes open. Got it. All right, Al, you get to work on that ventilating system. Bernie, you check the street. Eddie. 
Eddie's men are well trained, aren't they, Johnny? Not a moment lost. In a matter of seconds, you hear the faint sound of metal against stone. You begin to feel uneasy. But you don't have long to think about it. Before you know it, Eddie's voice brings you out of your thoughts. Okay, easy. Yeah, I got it. You look up and notice the gaping black hole where the obsolete circular ventilator had been a few minutes before. All right, Johnny. You experience that old feeling of excitement as you're lifted up to the ventilator hole and clamber through. Once inside, you spot the alarm system control. Quickly but cautiously, you put the alarm system out of commission. Then you move for the door. Work patiently with the door lock until you feel the lock spring. You swing the door open. Good work, Johnny. Get the boys. This won't take long. You move for the vault. Go to work swiftly and methodically. You work with the combination slowly. And then reaching up, you take hold of the gigantic handles of the door and pull gently. The door hesitates and then swings open. Beautiful. Al, Bernie, let's go. Johnny, keep your eyes on the front. You watch Eddie and his men as they waste no time loading their suitcases from the stacks of currency inside the vault. You see Al close the lid on his suitcase and start towards you. Oh, here, Al, I'll take that. Go back and help the others. Oh, okay. Yes, Johnny, that suitcase holds enough for you, doesn't it? You watch Al hurry back into the vault, and you notice that Eddie is preparing to leave. His eyes meet yours across the scant 15 feet that separate you. In that moment, you slam the vault door shut and lock it. Then you let yourself out the side door and onto the street. The grayness of the pre-dawn greets you from the east. And you hurry the half block to the sedan. And Laura. Move over. I'll drive. Johnny, what happened? We're in, baby. Let's go. Snug as rats in a trap, baby. I locked them in the vault. Vault? But the people at the bank, when they open They'll it... find three very dead guys. That vault won't be open till the bank opens tomorrow morning, more than 24 hours from now. They're finished, baby. They can't live sealed up like that. Johnny. Johnny, I'm frightened. I didn't think... No, but I did. And thinking got me over 50 grand in that suitcase back there and a wide open highway ahead of me. Where have we come, Johnny? Oh, 100 miles or so, I guess. Must have. Sun's up now. That's strange. We, we haven't seen any cars. You sure you know where you're going, Johnny? I've never been so sure, baby. Never been so sure. Well, what are you stopping for? This is in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I know, baby, I know. It's the end of the line for you, Laura. Johnny. Johnny, what are you... Oh, Johnny... No. Not I don't I don't need you anymore, baby. But, and I can't trust you. Come on, get out of the car. But come on, move. Wait. Wait, Johnny, please. Please, Johnny, you can trust me. I'll do anything. You double crossed Eddie for me, you'll double cross me for somebody else. You're the only one left who can identify me. But I won't tell anyone, Johnny. I promise. Sorry, baby. I promise. I promised you I'd take care of you. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> Right now, during the rainy season, scientific lubrication is even more important to your car to keep moisture from working into vital moving parts and causing damage. That's why I think you'll be interested in knowing about some of the extras you enjoy when you have your car lubricated at a signal service station. First of all, signal dealers take no chances on memory when it comes to the many lubrication points on your car. Instead, they check against Signal's factory-recommended lubrication chart, which clearly shows every part. Then they use nine specialized Signal oils and greases, so each part will get the exact type of protection it needs. And finally, just to make doubly sure not a single part has been overlooked, they check each part again, which is why it's called Signal Double Check Lubrication. Now, that's the kind of lube job you want if your car is to give you the long, trouble-free service that was built into it. And that's the kind of lubrication you get from friendly, independent signal dealers. (laughs) 
Well, Johnny, you've taken care of all the little things, haven't you? Eddie and his boys are finished. And Laura, the only other person who could connect you with a bank robbery, is all through, too. Lying dead by the side of the highway where you left her. You're a lone wolf again, Johnny. You and the $50,000 in the suitcase in the back seat. Now, around lunchtime Monday, the events of Sunday many hundred miles behind you, you relax for the first time. Realize you're tired and hungry. And you pull up to a roadside restaurant, lock your car, and go inside. The restaurant's almost deserted. Just the waiter and one other man seated on a stool at one end, reading a newspaper. Hi, stranger. Hi. Ham and eggs, over easy, huh? And coffee. Sure, right away. Want to see the paper while you're waiting? No, thanks. Oh, Hello, mister. Hmm? Oh, hello. Mister, you're under arrest. Y- what? I'm sheriff of this county. What? Okay, but I just got in your county. I couldn't have broken any laws. You're under arrest for murder, mister. Now, wait a minute. You got the wrong boy. No, I don't think so. You murdered a girl back in California sometime early yesterday Now, morning. look, look, you're crazy. You got me confused with somebody else. I don't think I have. There's one thing I'm sure of. You're the guy they're after. I don't know your name. You're the guy, all right. Look at this picture on the front page. Hey. Yeah, you see? It's you, all right. But, but how? It's the darndest thing I ever heard of. The deputies who found the girl's body found a little camera rigged in her purse. She must have taken your picture just as you fired the shot that killed her. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Signal Oil Company has asked me to remind all of you who play cards. A 12-page booklet giving complete rules for the exciting new three-deck version of Canasta called Hollywood Canasta is yours for the asking at any Signal station. No purchase required, no obligation. Any Signal dealer will be glad to give you this booklet on Hollywood Canasta free while his supply lasts. Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman, Larry Dobkin, G.G. Pearson, Jack Moyles, Ed Max, and Tony O'Dare. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by James J. Cullen, music by Wilbur Hatch, It was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. Remember at this same time next Sunday, another strange tale by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. Stay tuned now for Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.